This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2208. Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel, part one, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your host and narrator. Thanks so much for joining me once again, where I read to you every day of the week covering all things health. And today will be the start of one of our longer posts, which means I'll split the reading up between today and tomorrow's episodes. So with that, let's get to part one as we optimize your life. Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel, Part 1, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. What is the core? The term core causes a lot of confusion, mainly because everyone seems to have a different opinion about what it is. For most people, the core is just another name for the abdominals, but the term actually refers to a much larger collection of muscles that stabilize the spine. These muscles work together to keep the spine as close to neutral as possible. Where neutral is, it's naturally curved state. Neutral spine isn't a single position that your spine never moves from. Think of it as a neutral zone, or a range that your spine can move within while remaining relatively healthy. A lack of spinal stability can lead to movement outside of this zone, which in turn increases the risk of pain or tissue damage. Lou Schuler in The New Rules of Lifting for Abs, explains, quote, When we talk about stability, what we really mean is that we want the lower back the lumbar spine, to move as little as possible when it faces a challenge. This small range of movement is called the neutral zone. The smaller and tighter it is, the more stability you have. End quote. Why is core conditioning important? When muscles contract, they create stiffness. Not only does muscular stiffness stabilize the spine and reduce the risk of tissue damage, it's also a requirement as far as optimal athletic performance is concerned. When the core is mentioned in this context, meaning as a way of transmitting power, it usually refers to the muscles of the trunk and hips, basically anything that isn't the head, arms, or legs. It's a lot more than just the abdominals and lower back, and extends from your shoulders all the way down to the biceps femoris, which is the hamstring muscle that crosses the hip. Core conditioning, unstable versus stable surfaces. Does exercise on an unstable surface lead to greater activation of the core muscles? Performing an exercise on an unstable surface, such as sitting on a Swiss ball or standing on a BOSU ball, is supposed to place greater emphasis on some of the muscles in your core, helping to improve your core conditioning, protect against back pain, improve athletic performance, and so on. Such exercises often appear a lot harder than their more stable counterparts. That's mainly because you're working so hard to stay balanced. And because of their high novelty factor, they often create the impression that they're superior to the same exercise done on the floor. There is research out there to show that an exercise performed on an unstable surface leads to higher levels of core muscle activity than that same exercise performed on the ground. Squatting with a light weight on a couple of inflatable discs, for example, leads to greater activation of muscles in the torso than squatting with the same weight on the floor. The big limitation with many of these studies is that they involve the use of relatively light weights, which is a problem because most people can lift a much heavier weight when they're standing on the floor than they can while wobbling about on an unstable surface. What happens when you compare differences in muscle activity using loads that take into account the fact that you can lift more weight on a stable rather than an unstable surface? That's exactly what researchers from Eastern Illinois University wanted to find out. They looked at muscle activation in a group of 12 trained men who performed four different exercises, the deadlift, squat, overhead press, and barbell curl, at two intensities, 50% of their one rep max and 75% of their one rep max, while standing on both a stable and unstable surface using a BOSU ball. The result? Muscle activity in the abdominals and lower back was not significantly different when subjects performed the deadlift, squat, overhead press, and barbell curl using a lightweight while standing on a BOSU ball rather than on the floor. What's more, there was no significant difference in muscle activity between the stable 75% of one rep max and unstable 50% of one rep max conditions for the external obliques 
and lower back across all four lifts. But when the overhead press was done on a stable surface using a heavier weight, rectus abdominis, the six-pack muscle, was worked a lot harder than it was during the same exercise on a BOSU ball using a lighter weight. Performed on a stable surface, the overhead press and barbell curl also delivered a decent level of stimulation, 40 to 50% of their maximal voluntary contraction to the deeper abdominal muscles. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Core Conditioning, How to Build a Core of Steel by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. So far, it sounds like maybe we don't need all of those fancy exercises to strengthen the muscles that support our spine, you know, those core muscles. Again, so far, it seems that those compound movements, the movements that use multiple muscle groups, like squats, deadlifts, presses, and so on, may be some of the best when it comes to strengthening those core muscles, especially when they're performed using a heavier weight on a stable surface. Now, we'll have to listen to part two to really find out. But what I truly love about today's article is that Christian wasn't just stating their opinion, but instead based today's article and their conclusions on published studies. But again, more on this tomorrow in part two. But that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.